The measure of love is to love without measure. The first impression of Father Patrick was, um, this is not a typical priest. He was very outgoing. And that is something that I normally don't associate with Catholic priests. So I found that very interesting. Father Patrick is this guy who's very, um, he's very charming, very engaging, very in, 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 in touch with what's going on in the world. And um, for me, it was very interesting to see someone um, from the church perspective who is very wholesome. He was among the oldest students in that class. Secondly, he was the only white student in the class. Over the years as well, I remember Father Patrick uh, doing his um, master's program in um, peace and conflict studies. And um, one of the aspects you will see about him is that he approaches everything with passion. He approached the master's program with a lot of passion. He got um, 14 A's and one B plus. Now, the interesting thing that is credit to Father Patrick is that the one lecturer who got him, who graded him a B plus, is the one he's using now for a supervisor for PhD. <laughs> that is Professor Wanyande. As, uh, as his lecturer then, I got the impression that he was a very inquisitive uh, student who would come to me with um, uh, material that he had read and ask me to explain, even if it was outside the normal uh, course or lecture that I was giving him. He's very passionate about people. He really has a heartfelt concern for the African people. He had a genuine interest in, in, in people. You could see somebody who really liked people, or someone who really enjoyed being around people and making a difference in people's lives. I was you know, well welcomed by Father Patrick which was uh, a very encouragement for me, good encouragement for me to start my work as a missionary in uh, Kenya. And uh, he told me how he's going to support me and all the promises that, uh, you know, he'll be there for me or with me in my mission. And I've, you know, over the years, I saw him fulfilling those promises. Anytime I was in trouble or I was in any difficulty, I could easily uh, go to him and talk to him and uh, he gives me his advice and the support on the mission. Over the years we played, in the early years, before we got old, we played a lot of football together, yeah? And um, Patrick is very competitive, yeah? He plays in the, in the forward, yeah? He would be a striker, scoring goals. <laughs> so that is his, uh, his, uh, his position on the team, yeah? So as I said, it's better to be playing with him than against him. And even when I was in Tanzania, I was playing uh, football in, in parish leagues up to 1994 until I got a very dirty tackle on my knee, somebody gave and that ended sort of my career at football. But, uh, but I was always interested in sport and um, even now I play a fair bit of golf when I get the opportunity and, uh, and I, I'd follow the leagues. So Father Patrick came to me and we had a conversation about, about Shalom as he was uh, setting it up. And I was very interested and impressed by what he had to say and very convinced by his vision for peace and reconciliation and the work he was proposing to do in Northern Kenya. The meaning of Shalom is best understood in the holistic integration of peace with justice and harmony. Not just peace in the sense of negative peace, just the absence of violence, but there has to be justice in society, but also harmony, reconciliation, where people have moved to positive peace, um, where they're interested in the well-being of each other. One of the principles we've worked with in, in, in Shalom is to try to understand the root causes of conflict. That's why an important aspect of Shalom's work is to do research in these conflict areas and to be able to analyze the data that we get from there and uh, use that data to understand the root causes of conflict. And this, this merges very well with the idea of training. Shalom has trained over 700 people in the last few years in, in, in many of the areas of, of Kenya where you have persistent conflicts. And the idea is to give them tools of conflict management and, and, and peace building.
When Shalom was founded, it was founded on the basis of research must be done, um, research must be the backbone of the organization. And um, so that we are not coming to impose solutions that are very much from the classroom or very much theoretical because the heart is to get a genuine, real solution for the people. One of the major projects Shalom has been involved in in the last few years is providing uh, solar panels to inter-ethnic schools. We particularly wanted to encourage inter-ethnic schools, although we also sometimes provide to other schools, but we wanted to encourage this idea of schools that were inter-ethnic, involve different communities, and also uh, providing desks and other materials it was very central because this helps to meet basic needs and also you find if if individuals acquire more education then in many cases they are less likely mm, uh, to be violent. Education plays a very important role in transforming people as well. In Tanzania they try to help us in setting up a youth center to get people together and certainly that will be a, uh, will, that will be a place to learn from and uh, I do agree that uh, we can't preach gospel if, if there is no uh, there, there is no uh, peace. But personally it's really wonderful to see how Shalom has grown as an organization. Um, it's expanded its work, it's in, as an office, its staffing, all of that has increased. In terms of trying to help uh, marginalized groups of people in Kenya, he has done a commendable job among the pastoral communities in northern Kenya. So he has a, a very um, deep knowledge of that area of Kenya and I suppose that's where uh, um, I can say my heart is and I can say very much that Patrick's heart is also in that area that's uh, amongst the nomadic pastoral communities of northern Kenya and in the bordering countries of South Ethiopia and South Sudan. He is a tremendous uh, capacity of starting things off I and mean, he doesn't, uh, he's not afraid of taking risks. I probably one of the biggest risk takers I've ever met, but in a very positive way. Uh, Shalom probably is one of the examples. I am working in Tanzania. If he had not taken risks over there, uh, the, certainly the mission wouldn't have been uh, forward so much uh, developed. He has left lots of uh, development there, and we could see that you, you need someone like him, and you don't find many of those type of people. As certainly as a person, I'm very convinced by his vision for peace and development. There are technical aspects as there has to be in the work that he envisages, but it's very much inspired by a vision of people living peacefully together. It's a people-to-people -people process that I, for me is one of the simple approaches to peace and conflict resolution that a lot of organizations seem to have forgotten. His passion in life is people, yeah? Yeah, it's about people and for people and understanding people and, and that's the passion that has, uh, that has uh, characterised his work in, uh, in East Africa, yeah? And the people are the people of East Africa, yeah? That's where he has his passion for, yeah? He is a, a dreamer who puts the dreams into practice. Many people just have a lot of dreams but they never realize and if Patrick starts something, he's sure that it will be done. As a Christian, as a priest, uh, uh, the greatest influence on my life uh, has been the man from Nazareth, Jesus, as we know, Jesus Christ, and uh, particularly the life that he lived and the message that he proclaimed uh, and has to be proclaimed um, throughout, throughout the world. And uh, it's a message really of reconciliation and peace. And then the whole life of, of, of Jesus was about bringing people together. It wasn't about excluding anybody, bringing them together into reconciliation where they could actualize their potential and to realize that they're so special. Every person is so special to God, but not just to God, but that everyone should be so special to each other. Well, Patrick, in Kiswahili, in, in, in Tanzania, we say Hongera Sana, 
uh, in the uh, in the language that he has learned as well. And we uh, uh, he has been working in Tanzania for many many years. So we are very proud uh, of you and uh, good work and uh, continue. I was very happy then um, last year to hear that he was uh, receiving this award because he has. Um, committed themselves to so many years, 25 years of working in, in East Africa. I'm, I'm aware that Father Patrick uh, received the International Caring Award and uh, we have had occasion um, to um, discuss this with him. Uh, the point I want to make really is that I wasn't surprised uh, given the kind of work that he has done. What's, what's important to me about the award um, is particularly the work we're doing. To me, that's what's great about it, is, is that it gave amplification to the work, it gave validation to the work. These people had done a lot of research, obviously, on the work that we're doing, on the organisation. What really caught their eye was the methodology and the, the, ab the absolute uh, effort to insert ourselves and to train the people with competency and not to be condescending and to help them and to build it from the bottom up. Me as someone who knows him very well and who is associated with him in these uh, activities, I felt extremely good about it. <laughs> it was something good for him as an individual, good for Shalom, and also good for those who have benefited from the activities of Shalom. So I think it's also important maybe just to um express my personal congratulations to Father Patrick on the International Caring Award. I think it's a wonderful honour, um, very well deserved. At the beginning, not I, I don't think we were aware about how huge this award actually was because he, um, typical of his manner, he didn't make so much fuss about it. Um, when we came to realise how prestigious the award is, um, how um, high profile it is, um, obviously we were very excited. And therefore when he was honoured and when, when the people who like about 8,000 kilometres away from where he comes from uh, shone light on him and took him as the next recipient of this uh, very important and uh, prestigious award, that of um, uh, International Caring Award, I was not surprised. And that means he really deserves it because he has a way of working such that others speak for him and others notice him. I think the award is a great tribute to all the people who are involved in the Shalom organisation. People who are here on the team here and um, on the board and the management and the staff, every one of them. And um, they're all part of this award. Uh, I also think of all the donors around the world who believe in helping this process and this approach. I think of people that helped me uh, when I was uh, in early days getting a team together to get Shalom off the ground. The fact that we're registered here and the government are supporting us and we go up into counties and while there might be difficulties in terms of the devolution and setting it up, we have to work through the, the systems that are being set up and in place and to thank all the individuals who have helped us along that course. I, I, I'm uh, congratulating him and encouraging him to continue with this work and to, um, to tell him that uh, there are people out there who actually appreciate what he is, is doing. I'd like to congratulate Father Patrick most sincerely on uh, winning the International Caring Award. I think it's well deserved and uh, I'm sure it's going to motivate him to keep working hard and, and keeping the flame of uh, Shalom uh, burning okay, for many years to come all over the region. The awards come and go but the work has to go on and uh, uh, when I look at my own life going forward, I hope in uh, 25 years' time I'm in some place up in western uh, Pokot or up in Turkana or in Marsabat or up in Mayali or over in Garissa. Or in fact, where I was like the last three weeks, I've made a few visits down to Somalia um, just to see if there's anything we can do to bring sides together that are in conflict so that the common interests and the welfare of the people can be improved. We ask you to guide and direct the work that he and others do for building a peace and reconciliation in our world so much needed. I, I believe that all of us when we look back on life, one of the great questions we should ask is to ask ourselves, have we made a valuable, a worthwhile contribution that life and creation and the welfare of people is a little better?
because we have walked on this earth.